It's the Real News Network. I'm Sharmini Pires coming to you from Baltimore. Venezuelan authorities arrested Major General Miguel Rodriguez Torres last week, accusing him of fomenting unrest within the military. Rodriguez Torres was the head of Venezuela's secret service under President Chavez and also spent some time as interior minister under President Maduro. The arrest has rattled critical Chavistas in Venezuela because Rodriguez Torres was generally seen as a staunch defender of the Bolivarian Revolution, who has only recently begun to criticize Maduro's management of the economy and of the political situation. Joining me now to take a closer look at the arrest is Lucas Corner. Lucas is staff writer for the website VenezuelaAnalysis.com and is a master's student at Venezuela's Institute for Advanced Studies. He joins us today from Caracas, Venezuela. Thank you so much for joining us, Lucas. Thanks for having me on. All right, Lucas, uh, Miguel Rodriguez Torres spent time in jail with President Chavez for participating in a civic military coup against former President Carlos Andres Perez. He was in prison with Chavez. He served in Chavez's administration and in Maduro's administration. So what more can you tell us about him and this sudden departure with uh, Maduro and uh, Chavismo? Yes, I mean, he has a long trajectory within the government and within Chavismo. I think that we have to see this current rift as something that has been building over the past year, that he, sir, as you mentioned, served after the death of Chavez as Minister of Justice and Interior until he was uh, dismissed following the controversial Quinta Crespo massacre in which five members of a revol revolutionary armed organizations in um, central Caracas were killed by the special investigative police um, under the command of Rodriguez Torres at that time, um, in a, you know, which generated a public outcry in which uh, Rodriguez Torres you defended the actions of the police, calling those who were killed um, criminals, and you know subsequently, you know this led to you know amid the protests of of important figures on the left, led to the dismissal of Rodriguez Torres by Maduro, and um, he you know basically uh, ceased to be p directly part of the government and you know, did, uh, did not occupy such a high profile position. However, you know over the last year, uh, over the last two years. Um, he has, you know, become, as you mentioned, increasingly critical of the government. Um, first, you know, really criti uh, criticizing the government's, you know, uh, you know, erroneous economic policies in numerous areas, in his view, but also um, taking a, a much uh, more strident political stand, particularly following the announcement of the National Constituent Assembly on May 1st of, of 2017. You know, as a basically. Um, the, President Maduro using his constitutional powers to convene this um, uh, citizens' assembly to redraft Venezuela's 1999 constitution, and he came out in public op op opposed this move alongside the Attorney General at that time, Luis Ortega Diaz, and you know, uh, as of last year, started his own political party, the Broad Defiance Movement. However, it's important to note that this um, movement has, and both Rodriguez Torres and his movement have. Um, as long with Luis Ortega in that respect, have moved closer to elements of the Venezuelan opposition, including a number of right-wing parties. That in August of 2017, he appeared at the uh, a conference alongside Julio Borges, the former head of the National uh, Constituent Assembly, as well as uh, the former um, two-time opposition presidential candidate Enrique Capriles. Um, and you know, in this particular event, along with, along with the Attorney General. He, his, his new movement, the Broad Defiance Movement, has um, joined the, a new coalition started by the right-wing parties of the opposition called the uh, Broad Front for a Free Venezuela, which includes, as I mentioned, all these other, the parties of the uh, Democratic Unity Roundtable, as well as important uh, conservative civil society groups like the Venezuelan Chamber of Commerce, which participated in the 2002 coup, um, as well as certain student groups, uh, Catholic Church, uh, evangelical churches, et cetera. So, yeah, absolutely. Um, he is, you know, seen by many within the uh, more critical um, segments of Chavismo as, you know, an alternative, as a critic of the government. But he is also a very controversial for, figure of or many on the left, including many on the left who are themselves critical of the government. 
All right, Lucas, so it's one thing to oppose the Maduro government and the way in which he is conducting government business or handling the economy or the politics in the country, but it's another thing to actually be coming from the left, being a Chavista uh, uh, government minister in the past, uh, appointed by Maduro um, and appointed by Chavez, and then joining the opposition. Uh, and what he's being accused of here is uh, somewhat amounting to treason. Do we know any more about his arrest and what he's exactly accused of? And is there any evidence? Okay, according to Venezuela's communications ministry, Rodriguez Torres is being accused of conspiracy against the constitution as well as quote unquote threatening the monolithic unity of Venezuela's armed forces. Now, there are no public charges have been formally presented um, against the former major general, but the major implication, at least from what uh, communication minister uh, Jorge Rodriguez has said, is that he had prior contacts with the CIA or maintains contacts with foreign intelligence um, outfits, which, you know, Rodriguez Torres admits to, but he says that, that he did this on the orders of Chavez, who, you know, saw, you know, saw it necessary to maintain open channels with these foreign intelligence agencies in the case of kind of a, a conflict or a breakdown of formal um, diplomatic relationships. So there definitely, we have not seen any um, real hard evidence or any formal charges, so we'll have to wait until we see um, that evidence to really come to a conclusion regarding the legitimacy of the case against the uh, former minister. And uh, this contact with the CIA, which is perhaps the most contentious uh, charges uh, against him, and he argues that it was because President Chavez uh, had asked him to. But he's no longer serving President Chavez, nor is he serving the Maduro government. So then what, do we know why he's meeting with the CIA? And were those meetings recent? We have no. I have not seen any public evidence with regard to that. There, there, there was a let. There was a, a supposed document that was circulated by the government that you know claimed that he was a agent of the uh, DEA, the Drug Enforcement Agency of the United States, that he was being paid you know a certain amount of money to um, pass sensitive intelligence to them. However, I, I have reviewed the, this document and uh, the the supposed English you know version of it, and I I found that you know it contains certain spelling errors and certain language which is inconsistent with an official document from the United States government. So I don't think that that's a particularly strong case against him in any way. Lucas, it's one thing to critique the government in power, and uh, many people have crit critiqued Maduro for the way in which he has handled the economy and the politics in Venezuela. But it's another thing to join the opposition. It's another thing to appear with the opposition. And, uh, and uh, there has been other falling outs with Maduro. For example, uh, we have uh, Rafael Ramirez, the former oil minister in Venezuela, who uh, recently resigned, uh, and he was appointed I believe, to the United Nations as the ambassador there when he resigned. So controversies aren't uh, out of the ordinary. There's been other people who left the Maduro government. Uh, but I think in terms of Miguel Rodriguez Torres, uh, particularly given that he was former intelligence um, and that he's also accused of um, uh, uh, plotting a coup, perhaps, against uh, Maduro. So there might be some legitimate reasons for what Maduro did here. Um, put this in context for us. Absolutely. I think we need to view the arrest of Miguel Rodriguez Torres within this broader you know, context of the crisis of hegemony within the Venezuelan state since the death of Chavez. The Chavez was this larger than life figure who alone was capable of uniting the multiplicity of different warring factions and you know interest groups that you know um, comprise um, Chavismo as a bloc, you know, and the, the particularly the ruling Socialist Party um, and the government in general. And at the you know, most recently we saw, you know, Rafael Ramirez, the former oil minister who, you know, is now under investigation for corruption. And he, you know, publicly broke with the government in December and called for, you know, challenging Maduro in presidential primaries. You know, likewise, Luis Ortega, you know, broke with the government over the National Constituent Assembly, you know, and ultimately herself, is, you know, came under investigation for corruption. 
and you know now Rodriguez Torres. And it, the 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 clear issue with all these cases is that you know, there's definitely on the one hand, you know, the government, you know, well, all of these figures have or have had you know presidential ambitions in one way or another. You know, explicitly in the case of Ramirez and Rodriguez Torres, who himself has been on you know presidential campaign, you know, for at least a year, if not two years. You know, and Ortega definitely there was a lot of speculation that she would you know, run for president in some way or another. So there definitely is, you know, the, the government as, as, you know, looks at these figures definitely as a direct challenge to Maduro, who is, you know, recognized by the bulk of Chavismo as the, you know, leader of the Bolivarian process for, for now and for the next six years, that, you know, including the left, you know, the, the, the critical, you know, elements of the left within Venezuela, the Communist Party, the, the Homeland for All parties have, you know, signed agreements with the PESU, you know, specifying very, you know, important revolutionary conditions for backing Maduro, and they, you know, they have backed Maduro. So there has not been, you know, a rupture between the left and Maduro, yet many of these figures like Ortega, Luis Ortega, and uh, now uh, Rodriguez Torres have, you know, openly broke broken with the government. And you know, definitely, there's there's a there's a question of the political challenge to Maduro and the Bolivarian process. And then there's the other question of, well, are these people really guilty of what they're being accused of? In the case of Rodriguez Torres, is he guilty of conspiracy? We have, that that remains to be seen. In the case of um, Rafael Ramirez, there definitely was immense corruption at PDVSA. We don't know if he was necessarily responsible for it, but that's clearly you know documented. These things have been denounced by the left. You know, in the case of Ortega, Luis Ortega, you know, there's been people have been denouncing, you know, many of these figures, you know, on the left for a long time for a whole range of activities, including Rodriguez Torres. And this should be kind of taken in in, in our, you know, understanding of this figure. All right, Lucas, Venezuela continues to be an unraveling, tumultuous situation. I uh, thank you so much for joining us, and I'm sure we'll be back to you very soon. But thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me, Sharmini. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.